this is really, 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 really a good book. I started out on the skeptic community about 2000. And I was looking for um, a topic for, for college. And I hit on the Pew Research study that they would do on um, the funny how you can't think of anything when you're really trying to do it. Um, illiteracy. There you go. Scientific illiteracy. And that was where I got my topic for um, for my capstone for when I was graduating with my BA in social and behavioral sciences. And I attended something called the Skeptic Toolbox, which was held up in Eugene, Oregon. And it was run by Professor Ray Hyman, who is a psychologist who's interested in, in the phenomena of um, psychics and so on and why people believe things they do and just understanding the whole idea of it. Anyway, just fascinating subject. So in 2001, I went to the toolbox and I met this man, this author, and his name is Maslo Polidorio. He is amazing. He's an awesome person. He was a student of James Randi. He's a magician. He is um, from Italy. He is a fantastic writer. He's written many, many, many books, um, some of them in English and some of them in Italian. He's well known in Italy. And he is just an outstanding, nice person. And I've known him for, oh my gosh, over 20 years. That's hard to believe. Wow. Anyway, so this is the book. I got it in 2001, I believe. It's when it came out. I read it at least three times, maybe more. I mean, look through it, through it for other reasons, but it is so interesting. So Masimo is a is a historian. He's written about the Colosseum in Italy, and he's written about uh, um, Van Gogh, and he's written about so many interesting things. But this book right here, I was just fascinated with because what Masimo is doing is he's taking the letters that Conan Doyle, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the writer of Sherlock Holmes, and Harry Houdini and their relationship that few years that they were they were trying to be friends. And it's 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 really interesting. Um so this book has some illustrations, which of course always make the book much more enjoyable when there's illustrations. It's a beautiful book. As far as the paper, um, the cover, the history of Houdini, and the history of Conan Doyle, and why he, you know, what 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 was going on between him, um, Harry Houdini was a man I don't believe who had a like a formal degree, and he would he really wanted to become um, a person of letters. Reminds me of. James Randi a lot. Well, James Randi and Harry Houdini had a lot in common. But so Harry Houdini was well-read, very educated in self-educated and obviously very astute and a savvy man and um, a great businessman. And he hooked up with, well, I shouldn't say hooked up with, but he formed a friendship with Conan Doyle. And it was fascinating because Conan Doyle believed that Harry Houdini was a medium himself and that he had, um, that the tricks that Harry Houdini was doing were magic tricks, but Conan Doyle could not understand it. Even though Harry was like, look, it's a trick. It's a trick. I'm fooling you. And he wouldn't really show him how it was done because he just wasn't that kind of guy but he would be like it is a trick i'm fooling you and harry's and uh conan doyle's like oh i know you're saying it's a trick but it's actually real well anyway they exchanged letters they went on vacation together a few times um and it came down to some pretty ugly stuff uh, one of what happened is colin doyle's wife became a medium and she was using automatic writing where she would like went to a trance and she'd write this stuff out. And she, Harry Houdini wanted to get a hold of his mom. 
what he he was looking for somebody who could be in contact with his mother he badly wanted to be in contact with his mother he adored his mother as all sons should says the mom of two boys they're not boys they're men now says a mom of two men <laughs> so um i know they're not watching this anyway my kids won't watch this watch, won't watch my videos but anyway, so, <laughs> um, where was I? Um, Houdini um, was, um, it just was just not, it was very ta tactless, but, but the ego of Conan Doyle was massive. And he thought, you know, he couldn't be fooled and there was just no way that um, what he was doing wasn't real. So anyway, um, Conan Doyle's wife ends up saying that she's had gone into a trance and she's found um, Houdini's mom and has a message for Houdini from his mom. And I, and Houdini's like, no, that was not my mom. And, and, and Doyle was just insulted. How dare you say that was your mom? My wife did this. And, and, she went all this trouble to get a hold of her mom and how dare you and then harry houdini's like my mom never spoke english and what she wrote was in english and they're like well it's the it's the spirit world you know they they, they kind of go through my wife and all that he goes my wife my mother would never ever have called me harry she called me by my real name which was like eric whatever the proper pronunciation is of it but she would have never called me harry at all ever and um doyle was just very insulted that that his his wife was challenged on this and it kind of really ruined their friendship they they uh treat traded barbs between newspapers um and writing letters and different things you know they would publish things about it and houdini tried to keep the friendship going he tried to um how do i say this he tried to not humiliate his old friend conan doyle by like calling him out he was just kind of like you know no i don't want to go there i don't want to go there because it was embarrassing you know for for these two men of great ego um to be battling on this this thing it's it was talk about a divide in their in their personalities but um harry loved having that kind of endorsement that academic endorsement by this very famous author and you know this this famous man and doyle kind of looked at the friendship as wow look at this this man who's who's performing all these miracles and yeah, and so on, and uh, he doesn't know that he's the medium himself. Now, I read this book, like I said, several times, and I made a few notes, so let me just look at these really quick to see if there's something I missed. Um, I thought that Polidorio, Mazuma Polidorio, did a wonderful job researching the primary and secondary literature, which gives us a unique view into the, um, into the world of Conan Doyle and um, Houdini. Um, he had many references to the personalities, and I I think that it helped answer a lot of the questions I had about their relationship and about these two people. Like, why was uh, um, Doyle so gullible about about this? Now, Doyle would call out mediums that he had found as that he believed were fraudulent. He did believe that some mediums were charlatans. But others were 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 good, and he he tended to really trust people. So people who were, um, you know, friends of friends, and who were endorsed so and so, he he tended to just kind of trust their their experience. I also think he kind of thought that sometimes some mediums have to cheat, but they don't always cheat. But we shouldn't throw them out because they sometimes got cheating, got caught cheating. Um. So this book, this book isn't about like convincing anybody about mediumship. It's just really about the relationship between these two. 
um, there's lots of illustrations that show the medium room and what's going on with like, um, I think it was uh, the Davenport, Davenport brothers and some of the other famous um, mediums at the time and what was going on. I believe it has some of that in here. Like I said, there's and here's here's uh, Bess, uh, Harry's wife and his mother and Harry Houdini, and it's just it's terrific. And here's some of the here's here's Houdini making um, the fake hands that the mediums would use. They they would uh, put in the uh, paraffin mold molten paraffin, dip their hands in that, and then during the dark seance, which seance always has to be black, right? <laughs> these hands would appear and and then tambourines would, would make noises and you know it's just it was just so hilarious the victorian seance were incredible it's very sad that um uh harry who die harry houdini dies and the way he dies that's very sad oh oh my gosh somebody's gonna make a movie on this but only if they do a really authentic job but there is a medium that was super pop popular at the time and her name was Marjorie and she was fascinating here she is and Harry Houdini had a had um I think he bust her a few times she was one of these women who was um using her sexuality I believe she appeared and she appeared naked at her seances and allowed people to look at, um, when she did have clothes on like under her belongings and hold her legs and stuff like that to see that she wasn't being um, tied up. Here's here's an illustration of Marjorie and the men. Of course, they're men, and they have to hold her hand and they have to put their hands by her feet. It was it was there was a lot of that going on. Let me tell you, there was an awful lot of sexuality being done in these seances, and that is a whole movie in itself. But um, Somebody needs to do it. They need to do it right on the history of this kind of thing. It just seems fascinating. Look at look at this look at this box this person's put in here to keep himself from from um, uh, you know ringing the bell that's going to be in front of him or whatever it is. It's just incredible. Don't don't put people in boxes and stuff like this. Just don't turn out the light. Why why do we have to have the lights out for <laughs> for mediums anyway? Mark Edward, my boyfriend, is an expert on the Houdini seance. And it is incredible what he does. It's so interesting. I've, I've done a few of these with him. And um, he's, oh, he's so good at it. I mean, he thinks about everything. The the smell, the sound, um, boxes opening, just all of that. The story, it's really well done so i hope i hope that he's going to be able to do some of these seances in the future and show people how these were done historically it's like a play it, it's it's great and interesting as long as you understand that it's not real but anyway so this is uh my review uh final seance by masimo polidorio which is called the strange friendship between houdini and conan doyle i believe it's from 2001 it's definitely readable. There's a lot of, um, like I said, the book quality is great. And um, he's written so many other books that are really terrific as well. Uh, lots of articles in Skeptical Inquirer magazine. He's also, I believe he's the president of the Italian group, the skeptic group in Italy. I've been to one of their conferences and I got to speak. He's just phenomenal. Oh, and it's autographed. Can you see that? Here it is, autographed. It says, to the magnificent Susan, unstoppable and lovable, your friend, Lasmo Lodoro. October 26, 2016. So he signed it much later. I got to take him to a conference in Vegas and have him sign it. But just just the quality of the, of the print, too. I don't know if you can see that really well, but look at the font on here it's it's beautiful it's just such a pretty it's a pretty book it's um look at you can see here better with the with the that there it's just a beautiful book i don't know if it's available as an audio book but the it just feels good it's a nice size um it's like i say it's totally readable it's got lots of historical um information and lots of illustrations 
yeah, I'm I'm friends with him. He, he's he's a great guy. There's my conflict of interest. Oh well, I still think it's a terrific book. If I didn't like the book, I just wouldn't read it. Right, okay. <laughs> if it was a book that I didn't like, I'd just be like, oh, I haven't gotten to that yet. <laughs> I know it's the joy of years, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. You know, there are a lot of books I have not gotten to yet. So anybody who's given me a book or or anything of the sort, and I haven't, I haven't talked about it, it's not because, you know, I didn't like it. It's because I haven't gotten to it yet. Anyway. I hope you guys are liking the series I'm doing on books, on uh, mediumship, spirituality, well, not spirituality, spiritualism, but the history of it. I'm also going to be doing a lot of videos on, I hope to, on books that are critical thinking books and um, just talk about different aspects of the paranormal world, but kind of lean into the spiritualism and mediumship world as well. But I think it's important to understand um, where the history of mediumship was, the history of all that, to be able to understand where we are now. Because it's it's all like flows together and, and how it's developed and evolved over time is, is really fascinating. I love history, especially social history, and I hope you do too. If you want to hit um, subscribe, I would appreciate it. Leave me comments. I love comments. Um, hit the bell so that you'll know whenever I'm, I've uploaded another video. I tend to go in where I will do several in a couple days, and then I'll go a week or more and not do anything. Um, so I don't have a schedule for when I'm putting out videos, but please um, keep in touch and uh, let me know what you want to see more of or less of or whatever. I'd appreciate it. Thank you guys.